This episode of the LCTV News is brought to you by Columbia Insurance Agency. Serving Lynn community for over 60 years with home, auto, and business insurance. Hello, I'm Mukala Kabongo, and this is your LCTV News Update for Friday, April 9th, 2021. North Shore Community College has a new president. In a unanimous choice by the Board of Trustees at North Shore Community College, William Heinemann will be the fifth president in school history. Heinemann will officially take the role on July 1st, once approved by the Massachusetts Board of Education. Heinemann was previously the provost and vice president of academic affairs at Northern Essex Community College. Heinemann, Heinemann replaces Pat Gentile, who retired last September. A Lynn man was sentenced to two years in federal prison Tuesday for multiple robberies of convenience stores stretching from 2019 to 2020. Paul Pacheco was charged with committing five robberies at two convenience stores in 2020. And in November of 2020, he pleaded guilty to one count of robbery. In January of 2020, Pacheco was arrested by authorities while committing a robbery. Pacheco will spend two years in prison and two years of supervised release. He will, he will also be ordered to pay $380 in restitutions. Earlier this week, counselor at large Brian Fields organized a ballot signing event outside of Salamine Funeral Home and LCTV was on hand. So we're out here collecting signatures today from uh, anyone that wants to stop by any registered voters in the city of Lynn. We call it a pop-up kind of signature nomination night. Um, I invited all the candidates that have uh, pulled papers so far to join me here out in the parking lot. I knew there was no, uh, no services going on this evening at the funeral home, so we have a parking lot available. We're trying to encourage people to get out of the house, and, and we, we need our signatures to be on the ballot this year. Uh, At-large candidates all need 350 signatures, the mayor's candidates uh, need 500, the school committee also needs 350, and the ward councilors all need 100 from their wards. And it's probably a cha more of a challenge this year than it was two years ago, uh, from not knocking on doors as much as we did, you know, keep everybody safe. We try to see what's going to work for people, what brings people out, and we've had a good turnout tonight, um, despite the wind. <laughs> we can't control the weather. But, but we'll, we'll keep doing it. We'll keep working and plugging along. We're all trying to get on the ballot, and everybody deserves that opportunity. So I hope you do reach out to all the candidates and sign their papers so that they can be on the ballot this upcoming September and again in November. And uh, we, we certainly appreciate all the support that we can get. This past Tuesday, Ward 6 Councilor Fred Hogan, in collaboration with the YMCA, put together Ward 6 Day, where residents got, got a tour of the new YMCA facility that is set to open on May 10th. Here's more from the event. I'm Ward 6 Lynn City Councilor Fred Hogan and uh, today we're here at the Tamarcus Family YMCA built right here in the heart of Ward 6 Lynn. People have been waiting and people have been patient and, and we really hope that this has become a beacon of hope for people as we got through COVID. I mean this facility is brand new, state of the art. There are three pools, there, are, there is a brand new gymnasium, there's 12,000 square feet of fitness, a teaching kitchen, a cafe. Uh, the YMCA in Ward 6, it's been here forever. Um, when they built this new building, they, they made sure and they assured to me that they would be a strong community partner in this area. It's really excited to just bring something new 
and exciting to the education district and specifically to the community. It's well deserved and long overdue. So Council Hogan has been not only an advocate for the Y, but he has been a friend of the Y, specifically during the pandemic. Um, Council Hogan assisted us as we assisted the Salvation Army to run a diaper drive for the community, which has been hugely successful. They assured to me that there'll be a strong community partner for the residents of Ward 6 and Lynn, and, um, and they'll work with any families that need assistance in this community. We want to honor the partnership and relationship we have that this is built in Ward 6. We want to honor the commitment and relationship we have with Council Hogan. We are honoring him this year at our annual breakfast as Volunteer of the Year because he has worked tirelessly on behalf of the Y and for all of the community of Lynn. This building is amazing. I mean, like I said, I grew up in Ward 6 my whole life for 50 years, and seeing something like this built right in this area, it's truly amazing. April is Donate Life Month, and on Thursday morning, a flag-raising ceremony was held outside of City Hall to celebrate the lives that have been saved by organ donations. LCTV was on the scene. So, happy Thursday in the wonderful city of Lynn. Mayor, thank you so much for hosting us in your house to celebrate April as Organ Donation Month paying tribute to individuals who gave the greatest gift, the gift of life, and thanking individuals who register as organ and tissue donors when they go to the wonderful RMV and or online at registerme.org. In September of 1983, my son Scott was a junior at Salem High. And one night on his way out to driving school, he said, Mom, if anything happens to me, I would like to be an organ donor. And I actually remember saying, Oh dear Lord, I don't even want to think about it, just go. But we all did sign up to be organ donors and for a good many years never thought about it again. Now for the sports update. The Lynn English boys basketball team wrapped up their season this past Saturday with a 75-71 victory over Everett in the Greater Boston League Championship game. Kanye Wavezwa led the way with 25 points. Senior Ademide Badmus notched another double-double with 20 points and 14 rebounds. The Bulldogs, who were down by as many as nine points, used a 14-0 run in the third to take the lead and would never look back. English finished their season with a perfect 8-0 record. This was not only the final game for the Bulldogs seniors, but also the final game for head coach Antonio Anderson, who will be the new head coach at Springfield Commonwealth Academy. The Lady Bulldogs suffered their first loss of, of the season in the Greater Boston League Championship game as they fell to Everett 47-41. Everett's Andrea Manley was the game's high scorer with her 27 points to lead the Crimson. The Lady Bulldogs finished their season with a 7-1 record. The Lynn Jets finished their season winless after falling to Everett 9-7 in Everett Tuesday night. Matthew Patry scored two goals and added an assist for the Jets. Christian Alquinta also scored two goals. Four different Jets players scored in the matchup. The Jets finished their season at 0-5. St. Mary's Spartans football team got their first win of the season over the weekend as they defeated Millis 32-12 at Manning Field. Quarterback Ali Berry came up big for the Spartans as he threw for a touchdown and ran for three. The Spartans are back on the field tonight as they host Bishop Feehin at Manning Field. Kickoff is set for 6 p.m. Kip Academy will look to end their two-game skid tomorrow when they take on Whittier Tech. Last weekend, the Panthers fell to Lowell Catholic 34-19. Kickoff for the matchup with Whittier Tech tomorrow is set for 6 p.m. 
The Boston Celtics are back at 500 after their 101-99 victory over the New York Knicks on Wednesday. In what was a close game, it turned out to be Marcus Smart's three-pointer with 36.4 remaining in the game that gave the Celtics a 96-93 lead. The green team would knock down their free throws down the stretch to seal the victory. Jalen Brown had another great outing for the Seas as he notched a double-double with, with his team-high 32 points and 10 rebounds. Jalen Brown also added a double-double as he put up 25 points to go along with 10 rebounds. The Celtics continue their homestand tonight as they host the Minnesota Timberwolves. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m. After dropping their first three games of the season, the Boston Red Sox have won four in a row after defeating the Baltimore Orioles 7-3 Thursday afternoon. Eduardo Rodriguez had a strong outing on the mound as he went five innings, striking out seven batters and allowing three runs. Rafael Devers got things going for the Sox offense with his first inning homer to make it 2-0 Boston. The Orioles would respond with a two-run homer of their own to even things up at two. Boston would get five runs between the 6th, 7th, and 8th inning to give them breathing room for the victory. The two teams will face off again tomorrow. First pitch is set for 7.05 p.m. On this week's Lynn Lowdown, we spoke with City Council President Darren Sear. Here is this week's Lowdown. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Lynn Lowdown. We are continuing our interviews with mayoral, mayoral candidates. And today we have Mr. Darren Sear with us. He's still the city council president, but right now he's with us to talk about his, his uh, decision to run for mayor. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? I'm, I am great. I am great. I am great. Uh, you know, Darren, you've been... You've been involved, you know, with with the city for so long at City City Hall. You know, um, first when uh, Mayor McGee announced his decision to not to not uh, seek re-election, what were your thoughts on that? And did you ever was this something that you always had in mind of running for mayor? Or was this something that you thought you just give it a shot at this point? Anybody who's a politician in the city of Lynn, whether you're a city council or on the school committee. At one point or another, you think about running for mayor because you can always think you could do a better job or um, that you have some better ideas. And I'll be honest with you that the last few years, I wasn't really thinking about it. I've been friends with Mayor McGee, Tommy, for many, many years. Our wives are very close. So as long as he was going to be mayor, I would never run for mayor. When he made the decision not to run, um, People had been approaching me for quite a while to, to run. So he actually, he made the decision for me when he, he chose not to run. To watch the full interview, visit the LCTV website. Thank you for watching the LCTV News Update. Make sure to subscribe to the LCTV Facebook page and also be sure to subscribe to the LCTV YouTube channel. Also visit the LCTV website to watch any show at any time on your computer, phone, or tablet. I'm Mukala Kabongo and have a great weekend, ladies and gentlemen.